Socialism has been anti-religious from the very beginning. Karl Marx believed religion to be a drug that gives an emotional escape from the real world. Religion is, as he famously put it, the opium of the people. Religion, therefore, according to Marx, must be abolished so that man can find real happiness. In 2008, then-candidate Barack Obama reiterated Marx's formula of religion as an illusion and crutch for those that can't face the real world. He targeted small-town voters throughout the Midwest, saying that these voters became bitter and then cling to guns and religion as an escape. The global secret combination seeks to overthrow the freedom of all nations, especially the free exercise of religion enshrined in the Constitution's First Amendment. To that end, governors are using the lockdowns to target religious groups, while at the same time giving exemptions to businesses. In other words, the left is expanding its war on religion, both in the United States and abroad. At some point, any plot to overthrow a government must turn violent. No government will simply walk away. The left used an outrageous murder of a black man by a police officer as the pretext for nationwide violence. These cities include, but are not limited, to the following. The violence erupting in the cities throughout the nation cannot be considered, by definition, a peaceful protest. Besides, as Attorney General William Barr explicitly stated, the original peaceful protest have been hijacked by far-left radical groups, some from out of state. These riots are planned and organized using Antifa-like tactics. Unfortunately, with the rioting that is occurring in many of our cities around the country, the voices of peaceful protest are being hijacked by violent radical elements. Groups of outside radicals and agitators are exploiting the situation to pursue their own separate and violent agenda. In many places, it appears the violence is planned, organized, and driven by anarchic and left extremist groups, far left extremist groups, using Antifa-like tactics, many of whom travel from outside the state to promote the violence. Rioters have targeted uniformed authority, burning police cars, seizing police stations, and killing police officers. They have targeted symbols of cultural authority, toppling statues and defacing monuments without reference to police brutality. This is not simple rioting, let alone protesting. This is armed insurrection. Front and center in this insurrection is a group called Black Lives Matters. The claim is that BLM is a nonviolent civil disobedience group protesting police brutality against African Americans. It peacefully seeks racial justice. But this is just a front. The group is actually a Marxist-led group of militants intent on destroying the United States and replacing it with something else, presumably a Marxist state. One of BLM's founders, Patrice Cullors, publicly admitted that she and Alicia Garza, another BLM founder, are trained Marxists. I think of a lot of things. The first thing I think is that we actually do have an ideological frame. Um, myself and Alicia in particular are trained organizers. Um, we uh, 
are trained Marxists. Um, Hawk Newsom, co-founder and chairperson of BLM's New York chapter, went even further in an interview with Martha McCollum. He stated plainly that if the nation didn't give BLM what they want, they will burn the system down and replace it. So much for racial justice. This country is built upon violence. What was the American Revolution? Mm -hmm. uh, what's our, 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 our diplomacy across the globe? So for um, any American to accuse us of being violent, it's extremely hypocritical. If this country doesn't give us what we want, then we will burn down this system and replace it. All right, and I could be speaking phys uh, figuratively. Okay. I could be speaking literally. It's a matter of interpretation.